Patagonia would have gotten out of PFAS regardless of if any laws had ever been passed. This is the right thing to do. Our factories are really the ones taking on the brunt of how you deal with that chemistry at the end of its use phase. We don't want to participate in creating demand for those chemistries to be created. We're no longer customers. I've tested thousands of fabrics over the years. Different combinations of chemistry, different fabric constructions to get the best waterproof performance that we can. And these were all failures. The introduction of PFAS, PWR is durable water repellent, enabled people to go into places or do things they couldn't have done before. But the summit! Waterproof membranes enabled them to stay dry, enabled them to stay warm, body moisture to breathe, with this lightweight package that seemed to do it all. The bar is set super high. Now we're like, cool, we want to do the same thing, but with no PFAS. That's a pretty hard technical challenge. <laughs> PFAS chemistries are perfluoral, alkyl, carbon, fluorine, fluorine, uh, I'm sure Dwyer probably said it. PFAS, the acronym stands for per and polyfluoroalkyl substances. PFAS is a class of molecules that has fully fluorinated carbon backbones. It actually has the lowest surface energy of any known material. So nothing wants to stick to it. It basically repels everything. As a result, they're used all over the place in hundreds of thousands of applications. So these chemistries, while highly effective from an engineering standpoint, have some adverse effects. The main concern with PFAS is its use during the manufacturing phase. You have severely contaminated watersheds, groundwater, things people are drinking, they're cooking with, they're eating, and as a result, high incidences of cancers and other sicknesses in those areas. It's very much a human issue. So by removing those chemistries from our product, we're no longer customers. Patagonia has been working on removing PFAS from our product for almost 15 years. What we realized back then was that over 50% of our product line contained a PFAS chemistry. You have to figure out how you were going to make that product without PFAS. We started scouring the universe. Big chemical companies, startups, everybody in between, what's out there, where are you at, how does it test? We got five standard fabrics that we thought were broadly representative of our product line. Tested every single DWR we could get our hands on, on each one of those fabrics. Drawers full, fabrics would literally pop out. And these were all failures. <laughs> but necessary steps, I think, to get to the performance that we're at today. We also worked with our chemistry suppliers, making sure that our products really met our quality standards. And by the way, it has to pass field testing, and we have some pretty hard critics who are PhD in sport and will tell us exactly how they're feeling. So all this work, we're getting a similar level of water repellency but what you lose is the oil repellency. What oil repellency does for water repellency is it basically keeps the jacket clean. You actually have to change how you care for the garment. PFAS-free chemistries are much more susceptible to contamination from body oils and sunscreens, insect repellents. It makes it all the more important to wash and dry your jackets. Your waterproof shell, your jacket with DWR on it are engineered to be cared for. So keep washing it, you're not going to hurt it. It's actually going to be healthier and happier as a result. We talk about footprint a lot, carbon footprint, water footprint, but our actual physical footprint in the world is our supply chain. The people that are making our garments, our fabrics, the communities that surround them, helping to switch to better chemistry in those places is really important. How do we architect that conversation? How do we get them to do what's right for the planet and really right for their business? Our environmental impact program has a standard related to PFAS chemistry. So if the facility is using PFAS in other capacities for other customers, we're ensuring that that PFAS doesn't enter their wastewater. We're looking at their different production lines, looking at what chemicals they're using, looking at workers that are interacting with those different processes. The standards are applied across the facility and not just for our production lines. And that really just sets the stage for others to follow suit, to adopt things that are better for the world. 
The only reason that I'm able to sit here and talk to you about any of this is because we've spent a better part of the last decade tracing our supply chain, getting to know our suppliers, and at the end, knowing where our stuff comes from. Being the company that we are, our mission is to save the home planet. We are not going to do that alone. And so if we are able to help facilitate the transition to better chemistry and that helps other brands, we're stoked.